Hey YouTube, Target Popper here, and this is the Japanese Type 14 Nambu. This is the was the standard service sidearm for Japan during the Second World War. It was just issued to non-commissioned officers, and commissioned officers, you know, had to buy them. They had to purchase their pistols. We're going to do a disassembly today. Um, I just picked this one up. I paid a nice little bit of money for it. But I'm really happy with the uh, package I got. I got the gun, I got an original holster, uh, some accessories with it, and some ammunition. So, very pleased. Really like the gun so far. It's very unique, and it's very cool. A lot of history to it. So, without further ado, I guess we're going to show you the safety, how it works. Here's the safety. The trigger does not work, and you cannot operate the pistol. The other safety is it has a magazine safety. Trigger doesn't work, but you can still operate the gun. So we're going to move on from here. Gun is not loaded, obviously. I already checked it beforehand, but it doesn't hurt to be double sure. Now at the end here of your cocking piece, this is the extension, your striker spring, or your striker extension. You're going to push that in. You're going to rotate your cocking piece counterclockwise and push it in one more time and rotate it there's your cocking piece there's your extension here's your striker and your mainspring now depending on when your pistol was made and when it was rebuilt if it was ever rebuilt the length of your striker striker extension and spring can be different so don't fret if they are slightly different I guess they tried a different, a different uh, set of combinations to try to alleviate the problems the guns had with uh, snapping their striker off. So, all right, doing good so far. We're gonna drop our magazine. We're gonna set it aside. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push down the whole assembly. Notice how when you push on the barrel. The entire upper portion of the gun and the bolt unlock. And as we do this, we're going to push our <coughs> our mag catch in as far as we can. It's a little tricky here. And as we do so, we're going to try to. There you go. Remove the trigger guard. And the trigger guard has your trigger assembly in it, all your little bits and pieces. So I'm going to set that aside. Next, we're going to remove the upper portion. Here's the lower portion of the gun. We're going to set that aside. Here's the locking bar or locking wedge, I guess you call it. Basically copied from the Italian Glacentis. I guess you couldn't really say it's copied because they came out around the same time. Uh, the Nambu series did. There's a recess in the bottom of the bolt. Once in battery, and it's ready to be fired. Obviously, it's locked up right there. When the gun, when the upper portion of the gun recoils when it fires, there's a little spring, and that spring keeps tension on this for just a second, and the whole thing recoils. That disengages. Your bolt flies back, ejects the cartridge, goes back forward stripping around from your magazine obviously your entire upper portion is moving back and forth at this time as the gun returns to battery that closes back and it's good to go for another another shot so what we're going to do is we're going to take out that little lock we're going to withdraw the bolt this is all stripped you don't have to go any further with that here's the springs we're not going to remove the extractor today, mainly because when you hear somebody breaking apart on a gun like this, it's mainly due to operator curiosity. We don't need to take that out. Uh, if you really want to clean under it, just get a toothbrush and just clean underneath it. Okay. Now this is pretty much as far as you would go just for a field strip. You wouldn't take the grips off. You want to take out any of the internal pieces, but we don't field strip things on my channel. We go the whole 
whole thing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to remove this screw there, which in turn releases this grip panel. We're going to hold this grip panel as we unscrew this one for a pretty good reason here and I'll show you in just a second. Try to do this over a table because there's a little spring in here that you don't want to lose. And gently let your grip panel up and lift it up and off. The reason we did that so slowly is because that will release your mag catch and underneath your mag catch there's a tiny little spring that you don't want to lose. Okay, so next we can do the safety. You're going to rotate it downwards. And line it up at that position right there and pull it out. Okay, next we can do our sear bar, which runs the entire bottom length of the gun. And you can actually see it right there, too. Now there's a piece in here that looks kind of like a rivet. It's not a rivet. All you gotta do is put your thumb so you're holding that sear bar in place. Push that little button out. And there it is. And you can gently let your sear bar go. Pull your sear bar out. Take a needle or some similar device and right this is the safe position, and here's the arrow. Right underneath the arrow is a little housing for a spring, and the spring is very tiny. Don't lose this. This is very important to the gun's operation. Let's set that aside. Okay, there's another spring in here. This is the spring that acts upon that swinging wedge. I'm just going to pull it forward right out. Alright, now our magazine safety is the only thing left. If you are short on patience and don't want to do this, I recommend you don't. If you don't have patience, <laughs> don't do this part. What we're going to do is we're going to hold it. So I, we're kind of putting downward pressure on it and we're also keeping it pivoted downwards push out that pin and the whole thing kind of flies out. Now I recommend taking a rag or something, something I didn't do right there, placing it over the gun and pushing it out once you have everything lined up. That way your rag will catch it. Now here's the spring, here's the little button, and here is your mag safety. Now be very careful when you do that because as you've seen all my pieces flew everywhere. And that is a fully stripped Nambu besides your trigger group and your extractor. That's as far as I'm going to go with it. Um, we will reassemble it here in just a second. Um, very simple gun in reality. It's not very difficult. I mean, I've had the gun for just a couple days. And just looking at the gun, I can figure this out by myself. So, very simple gun. I guess maybe not simple, but it's not very complicated if you keep your wits about you. So we're going to reassemble the pistol, starting with our magazine safety. Put our spring back in. Gonna put that little button back in there. A little plunger. It'll fit. It should fit. I think I might have that spring in upside down, I do. There we do. There we go. Get that guy back in there like so. Next, this is a tricky part. Gently hold on to it so we don't upset that little plunger. Kind of doing this with the wrong hand. I'm going to guide that plunger in so I can Oops. 
compress it. Okay, kind of got it compressed a little bit. Once I can actually hold the pistol, we can line it up. Kind of hard to see right now, I know. Just got to get that pin started. Oh, I missed. I missed of all things. Got to get there. All right. Got the pin started. Basically, I was holding it like this with my thumb on the trigger block and my middle finger on top of it, and I was putting pressure down on it. That pin on mine is pretty easy to get in and out, and you just got to finish it off by lining up this side here. There we go. That's really the hardest part of the gun to get back together because that little spring-loaded plunger isn't captured and it isn't retained. So that's really the hardest part of the gun to do. The rest on out is pretty simple. Now we can actually put our safety in before our sear bar. Just like that. And we can take that little spring, put it back in its recess. Make sure it's all the way in. Here's our sear bar. All right, now on the inside of the gun, it's a little tricky here to get it back in. I just kind of put it in the recess a little bit. Maybe. There we go. Once we got it started, we can then push our sear bar into proper alignment. And hopefully, let's get it in with our finger. There we go. Now, if that's worn out a little bit, if yours is a little worn out, it might just fall out uh, if you keep your pressure on it. But once you get it in, the spring pressure on the sear bar should retain that little piece for you. All right, those are basically the three tricky or the two trickiest parts: is your sear bar and your magazine safety. The safety itself is actually pretty easy. Okay. Here's that one spring, that uh, the main spring basically that acts upon the locking mechanism. I'm going to slide that back into its recess back here. I'm grab this grip panel. Don't really have to do the grip panels any any specific order. I just like to do whatever I feel really. Screw in there. Tighten that one up. Then we're going to take our spring, put it back in its little recess. There's our magazine catch. Line it all up. Perhaps. There we go. Feed our our, our grip panel over it and instead of pushing down with the grip panel what you're going to do is you're going to push down the catch alone because if you push down and you meet resistance while pushing down on your grip panel you could snap your grip panel in half but once you get that down and you get everything flush you can just hold the whole assembly together like so maybe not really the best idea right there but hey I guess it worked This screw, for some reason, is a bit of a problem child. There we go. Doesn't like to get started by hand. All right. This is basically the hardest part. Getting your frame all back together. The rest of it is the easy bit, and this is obviously all you would do for a field strip. <coughs> so we're going to start putting it back together. I just got to wipe down these springs real quick. There's some debris on them. Ew. Don't know what that is. Looks like old grease, white grease or something. Yeah. Probably from the previous owner. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. It means you took care of the gun. Get our 
springs back in their recesses. Now as you can see, there's the recess there and recess there. And that should all sort of fit back together. Oh, forgot to mention that. This little piece right here is staked in. This is your ejector. We're not taking that out. Okay. You got the upper portion back together besides this piece here. And you're definitely going to want to check the serial number on that because a lot of times um, if somebody says this gun's matching, you can check the whole thing. And usually um, if like this piece, I think it's this piece or the magazine uh, safety, if they're blued, I guess that means they're not uh, matching. I can't remember where I heard that. Um, or it means they were re uh, replaced at uh, refurbishment or something like that. Uh, I don't know if that is the same for the later guns where most of the parts were blued. Because if you look at the trigger, you see how it's strawed. And there's a couple other pieces on the gun that strawed. The safety was strawed at one point. A couple of the internals are strawed. The mag catch is strawed. The magazine safety is strawed. Um, and you notice how this guy here doesn't have a finish on it whatsoever. Those pieces, once later production began to ramp up, they were blued just to simplify production of it. So, I don't know. That's something I heard. I guess I can't really validate it, so I probably shouldn't even say it. But whatever. I'm gonna line everything back up into here. Okay. Gotta push. Why aren't you going in there? Oh, right. There we go. That should all line up now. There we are. Going to line our trigger guard back up. Hold the barrel. Okay. Cool. Next, what I like to do is insert the magazine, take the cocking piece, put it back here, undo the cocking piece, drop the striker in, not all the way, follow that up with the mainspring, follow that up with our extension. right things should line up until about right over here then we need to push that down the extension and we need to begin tighten it back up and there we are that is the fully disassembled and reassembled Japanese type 14 Nambu not very difficult but you do need a little bit of patience with some of the smaller pieces um, it's kind of handsome in a very ugly way and I said it in the previous video that I've wanted a Nambu for probably the longest time ever since I really started getting collect into collecting and really into the history of the Second World War um, I think with a little bit more refinement this would have been just an amazing service pistol maybe in a bigger caliber, I think maybe if the Japanese had looked at the 9x19 that this pistol probably would have been uh, just an absolute knockout. Um, but, you know, that's that's all history now. 80 year old history, 90 year old history in some cases. Uh, these were adopted in 1925 by the Imperial Japanese military or by the Japanese I guess you could say. Um, Again, like at the beginning of the video, I said that the non-commissioned officers were not required to purchase their pistols. They were just given to them as uh, issue weapons, but commissioned officers had to purchase their pistols. So, a lot of them did not uh, hold faith in the Nambu family of pistols, so they would purchase other guns, such as Mausers and Lugers, and some would even purchase American pistols like the Browning 1903s. I don't know about 1911s very much. I don't know if very many of them bought those, but they probably did. I think that was probably something you'd run into once in a while. Uh, but anyway, one of the neatest pistols of the war, 
of the war, excuse me, and probably one that's a little lesser known about. Not very many people know about him. So, anyway, thank you for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy. And tune in next time. Hopefully we'll have some uh, shooting videos of this pretty soon.